Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing process in your body. It could be in, in the chest, in the abdomen, in the shoulders, up in the head, anywhere where it's really prominent. Focus right there. And then ask yourself, is it comfortable? We're trying to provide a place for the mind to settle down in the present moment so it can watch itself. And it settles down only if there's a sense of comfort. So if the breath is comfortable, try to maintain that sense of comfort. If it's not, you can change. You can make it deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to see what feels most nourishing for the body right now. If you feel tense, try to breathe in a way that's relaxing. If you're feeling tired, breathe in a way that gives you more energy. This way you can watch what's going on in the mind. You're like a hunter. A hunter has to be very still, so he can detect the movements of the animals. But at the same time, he has to be very alert. So trying to be alert to the breath and still at the same time. Because you have lots of animals in the mind. You have greed in the mind, aversion, delusion. Fear, jealousy, all these things can come in and really make you suffer. But you also have the potential for mindfulness, alert, alertness, concentration, discernment. In other words, there are good and bad potentials in the mind. We're not innately good all over and we're not innately bad all over. We've got a mix. It's because of the mix that we have trouble, but it's also because of the mix that we can get ourselves out of that trouble. The trouble comes when we take on an unskillful mind state and assume that it's okay. We just say, well, it happens to arise in my mind, so it must be the way I think about things, it must be the way I feel about things. But you can also think and feel in other ways, ways that are more skillful. So you want to think about what are the consequences of different kinds of thinking. Because some kinds of thinking can get you to act in ways that you're going to regret for a long time. Other ways of thinking can get you wiser, you behave in ways that you'll be happy you did it. So think about the long term. You don't just go by your mood, just go by what you like or don't like. We have to think in terms of cause and effect, because that's how the world works, cause and effect. If someone would ask what Buddhism is all about, it's about cause and effect. And the main causes come from in the mind. Some people say they suffer because of things outside, but the Buddha says, no, the real suffering comes from inside. But the potential solution comes from inside as well, which means that you're in a position of power. You can get some control over your mind. Sort out all the different voices in the mind. Follow the ones that are skillful. And as you observe what happens as you follow the skillful voices, you get more and more skillful. There's a greater and greater sense of well-being. When you have a sense of well-being inside, then it's a lot easier to act not only for your best interest, but also for the true good interests of other people. Because you realize that acting in ways that are going to harm other people doesn't really help anything at all. You end up suffering too. But when you're feeling well-ordered inside, stable inside, you're much more likely to think and act in ways that are good for everybody around you and for the people around you. So think of this as a gift to yourself, and then you have more than enough to share, so you're happy to share this goodness with other people. This is what's good about training the mind. So many ways of finding happiness in the world are a zero-sum game. In other words, you gain, somebody else has to lose, or they gain and you have to lose. But this is win-win. You gain, the people around you gain as well. And this is how we bring happiness into the world. This is how we find our true happiness inside.